Hello, my name is Michael Nelson. I'm a recent graduate of Florida State University with a major in information technology and a minor in computer science. I specialize in network administration as well as web design, and I'm making this video as a tutorial to show you how to back up your computer to an external hard drive using a program called a Cronus True Image Home Version. The target audience for this tutorial is people of all levels of skill when it comes to using a computer. Everyone has important system files on their computer that they do not want to lose in the event of hardware failure or a power surge. So with this easy to use software, no matter how comfortable you feel using a computer, you should be able to ensure that your computer is regularly backed up and safe from those hazards. Now to begin with, you're going to need to download Acronis from their website, which is www.acronis.com. They have a free trial that's good for 15 days, so you can get it set up and see how it works for you and then determine whether or not you want to buy it. And if you do decide to buy it, it costs $49.95. Um, just a note, I'm running this program on Windows Vista. It's fully compatible with both 32 and 64-bit versions of Vista. And while I'm using Vista, this tutorial will still be applicable to Windows XP. There are some minor changes when it comes to the file system, but you should be able to follow along. Now, we're going to go ahead and open a Cronus True Image and click the Try Now button, which will open up the demo version. And once a Cronus loads, it's going to take you to the Acronis True Image home screen. And from this home screen, click on Backup. And this will take you to a section where you can choose which portion of your computer you're trying to back up. For this tutorial, we are only interested in backing up the entire system as opposed to just a certain part of it. So click on My Computer, and this will open up the Backup Wizard. Acronis makes everything really pretty straightforward. The Backup Wizard takes you through it step by step, although there are some settings in here that you're going to want to change, and I will take you through that right now. Now the first section that opens up is the Partitions to Backup section which allows you to choose which drive you want to back up with this current process. As you can see, I have two drives here, my system drive, the C drive, and then my E drive, which is my external hard drive. All I'm going to select is the system drive because I'm going to be backing it up onto the external hard drive. So ensure that that's selected, and then click on Next. This will bring you to the Target Backup Archive screen, or in other words, the screen where you choose where you want to save your backup. Since this is the first backup we're doing, you're going to click create a new backup archive and then you want to select a backup location on your external hard drive that is the location where it's going to be backed up to. So click on browse and this is where XP and Vista can be different. This is the, X, or the Vista file system here. So for Vista users, click on computer, click on Nextstar or whatever your external hard drive is called and then create a folder on there called backup or whatever you want to call it. I have one created already because I've already run backups and in this folder is where you're going to want to save it so you generate a file name and we'll just use their standard mybackup.tib file name and click on OK and as you can see it's updated to the correct backup name and just click next. At this point it's going to tell you that you are done with the setup and from here if you don't want to change any of their options you can go ahead and set it up but since we're going to try to set up scheduling to ensure that this is done on a weekly basis you're going to want to click the options button. Now this takes you to the optional steps the first of which is scheduling. For the scheduling I suggest doing a weekly backup and pick a time when you're most likely not going to be using your computer so I run mine every Tuesday at 4 a.m. when I'm likely to be asleep and make sure the task is set to run once every one week. And the resultant schedule of this is at 4 a.m. every week on Tuesday it's going to run a backup. And now, oh, this other option right here is if it misses it, if for some reason your computer's off, it will run the task at the next startup at the next possible moment. Now click next and this gives you your backup methods. We're going to be using incremental backups, which starts off by making a full backup and then every week only backs up the certain things on your system that you've changed since the previous backup so that it doesn't have to keep making full, 
complete full-size images of your hard drive, which will save you a lot of space. So click Next, and this will take you to Files to Exclude, so if for some reason you don't want it to back up your MP3 files because you have a lot of them, or, your, or whatever else that you don't want to have included, you can just add those right here, and just add the file extensions, and it will do that for you, make sure that it doesn't back those up. We'll just go ahead and go with the defaults, and click on Next. And that takes us to the backup options section where we can change some miscellaneous options before we move on to the final backup process. Go ahead and click on compression level and this will allow you to change the size of the final archive. The amount of compression that it does can affect the size, so if you're running low on hard drive space you may want to set it to maximum compression in order to use less space on your external hard drive. However, this will take a lot more time for it to complete so I do not recommend it as the space savings are not that great considering the extra amount of time that it takes. Another thing you're going to want to note is the estimated creation time. It says one day for each one, which I believe to be an error. I've never seen it take more than an hour to do a backup, so I believe that that's just a bug in the program and I would not worry about that ridiculously large amount of time that it says it's going to take, but do keep in mind that it will take a lot longer to do a maximum compression if you end up picking that. Another thing you might want to change is the backup priority. It defaults to normal priority. However, if you plan on doing other things while it's doing the backup, if you want to surf the internet or play video games or whatever, go ahead and set that to low priority so it will use the least amount of system resources possible and it won't affect your other computing tasks that you are working on. Personally, I am going to set it to a high backup priority. This will cause it to complete as fast as possible. However, it will use as much system resources as possible but since we set it to run at 4 a.m., I don't plan on using the computer at that time anyways, so I can leave it on high priority. And the last thing you're going to want to look at is error handling. If you know that you have a bad hard drive, if you're trying to back up a hard drive that you know is going bad, you're going to want to set it to ignore bad sectors. This will ignore all of the corrupted data on your failing hard drive, and it will just save all of the good data that is left. This is sort of a last resort thing that you want to do and if you know that your hard drive is fine you can go ahead and unselect that and just worry about that if the program ends up throwing any errors during the backup process. And that is all that we need from the options so go ahead and select summary and this will show you all the settings that you selected if the scheduling and all of the settings look fine then you can go ahead and select run task now so that it will make the initial backup right now and then it will just do the incremental backups every Tuesday at 4 a.m. Click proceed and it will begin the backup operation. And this part will take anywhere from half an hour to an hour depending on how large your hard drive is and how fast your computer is. And once the backup has completed, you can look in your backup folder that you created and you will see the original file. Mine is named differently because these are the backups that I made off my laptop a month ago. That is the original backup right there. As you can see, it is a full 33 gigabytes. But then this is what is created when the incremental backup happens. This is what will happen every Tuesday at 4 a.m. And it will number these sequentially so that you'll know which one came in which order. And as you can see, since it was an incremental backup and didn't have to do a full backup, it was only two gigabytes as opposed to the original 33 gigabytes. And now every week, that will just keep adding another file and eventually we'll have a full complete history of all the changes that have happened on your computer and you'll be able to access them at any time in case you delete a file or in case something gets destroyed. Alright, well that does it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you and I hope you now have a good understanding of how to maintain your regular backups of your system on an external hard drive. If you have any questions at all regarding this video or the contents thereof, please email me at this email address right here and thank you very much for watching and again please contact me if you have any questions or more importantly if you have any employment opportunities thank you very much have a good day